Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here with uh, Smart Business Moves. Got Liz Trotter with us. Hey, Liz. Hi, y'all. And we have a regular on the show, our friend Matt Ricketts. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, guys. Good to be here. We're uh, going to talk about uh, PPP, uh, Small Business Administration, some of the uh, things some of our lawmakers have been working on recently to maybe help us out a little bit and answer any other questions you have about uh, matters such as this. But before I get too deep into it, I am going to share our schedule for the okay, bottom of the week. Look at me turning off my volume. And let's see if Liz can figure out how to get it on our phone without being really loud. Should I cover my ears? You know, I do it every day, right? Still haven't figured it out. We're, we're trying again. Practice Calling it out. Hey. Um, hope you guys had a chance to catch what we did yesterday with Ryan Knoll. Ryan, uh, as I said, back when he had a real job, used to do uh, SEO work uh, as a full-time uh, gig, worked for a large company, and he shared with us uh, a lot of insight, little tricks that uh, we would want to know as uh, small business owners to uh, get the best return off of our time and money when we're, we're pursuing SEO. And uh you know, hopefully keep us out of situations where we're spending a lot of money on SEO and not having a lot to show for it. Um, if you didn't, didn't catch it, um, it's out there from, from yesterday. Do that. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about PPP. Matt's going to be helping us with that. Um, Yusuf, um, help me with the last name, Liz. I'm just not... I've I'm never not. heard him pronounce it, so I'm just doing it phonetically to Memetobu. Me He's he's an awesome guy. He's 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 really nice, and he's a heck of a business owner. He uh, has a house cleaning business in D.C. that uh, is doing over five million a year. Maybe you know I don't know how much more than that. It's large. It's huge. Um, made bright, and um, he owns a, a flooring business and a few other things. I mean, he's got a lot going on, and he's going to tell us how really large business made uh, smart business moves during the uh, COVID crisis, during uh, the pandemic, this unprecedented event that we've all been dealing with. So, Dan, you are getting good, um, really good. In our way. And rental business, too. So he's, he's very diversified. He's got a lot of real estate holdings. Um, and, you know, the cool thing about him is he started with nothing. It wasn't like he was handed, it's not like he was handed money. He did this with his family all from, from nothing. So that's a really exciting guest to just see what you can build in your lifetime because they've done quite a bit. Yeah. And we're going to follow. I, I like that you pointed that out too, Matt, that he, uh, he, he didn't buy another company that was already up and running and just sort of do what he learned from them. Like starting from scratch is a different beast. Yeah, a cool topic with that might be like how to how to like how they've done this with their family and kind of use their family structure to create um, a leadership team too. I think that's kind of an interesting topic um, that I've heard him talk about. Um, he, I, yeah, I, I really like him. I think that's a great. Uh, you've got a, a great lineup, but I, I think that's going to be one people have to tune in to see tomorrow. I think that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be really enlightening if they're really trying to scale and grow. If you don't know, if you don't know, have you, if you've never met Yusuf or don't, uh, you've never had an opportunity to speak with him. You really want to catch that. He is really an awesome dude. And uh, Thursday we're having Chad and Diana Henley. Yeah. Um, yeah. People too. Smart people. Chad, uh, Diana and Chad both are a couple of our favorite people. Known them for a long time down in Houston. Um, they have a pest control service, and Diana and Chad have been in the house cleaning business for a long, long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know they, they've done a few entrepreneurial things. Chad used to flip uh, gym equipment. That was like a prior life. Uh, he, he got was, kidnapped. What's that? He got kidnapped? I don't know about that story. Kidnapped, yep. Yeah. Well, Chad's the only person I know that's ever been kidnapped. While selling gym equipment or yeah. – <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. good we'll, we'll ask about that on Thursday. Yeah. Very, yeah. very smart people. And again, just another family business. So it kind of gives you 
some insight on how people kind of manage those relationships. They've got uh, two generations working for them. Yeah, Diana's daughter, their daughter has worked for them, kind of runs the house cleaning business now, doesn't she? Yeah, and uh, the son, uh, Nick, is uh, pretty involved in the pest care. So I'm not sure if he's more at a technician level, kind of growing his skills, but um, uh, their oldest daughter is probably what I would consider their operations manager. She runs all the day-to-day -day, uh, of their business. So it's kind of cool they've been able to pass that on and then Chad and Diana get to you know, think about strategic stuff for their business. So um, yeah, that's that's another cool topic of, uh, I really like to see that kind of multi-generational like people have grown their businesses and are, are now uh, sharing the wealth with their family. So that's pretty cool. And we have uh, Friday scheduled as on the spot. That's our rapid fire uh, Q and A session. Got a really cool special guest. Um, and what, 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 do you have a hint for us, Liz? Well, did we decide what we're going to do about that, Tom? Are we are we going to try and give people the day off because of the holiday? Well, we, maybe we should ask what uh, what everybody's doing. We, it, it struck us that like the third is the like national observed holiday like for the fourth um how many people are going to be closed how many people are going to be out on the water or grilling out or, or doing something other than working and being with us on smart business moves and uh this is a really awesome guest and we really don't want to lose the opportunity unless we have a lot of people here to join us so maybe uh you guys can give us some feedback as to Who's going to be here Friday? We'll hit you up at the end of the the Facebook Live today too, and um, see what what you guys think when we can get more people on. When we have more people on, um, because I really don't want to. Tom pointed this out today. I'm like, oh, I really don't want to bring her on if we don't have a lot of people on, because you you guys will be. You'll be angry. <laughs> You'll that, be was angry. that was, I just heard a hint. Yeah, that actually was not my official hint. I'll give you the official hint at the end of the day if we decide to do it. Otherwise, or still mm -hmm. do her on Friday. Otherwise, we'll do her next time. Liz, I know you guys like always work. Um, Matt, are you guys working on Friday? Yeah, I actually have some jobs on the 4th that wanted us to be there too. So, we have some apartment complexes and some dealerships. I, I, I'm surprised. I have a Harley dealership, and they're open on the Fourth of July. Yeah, well, um, they got a lot of bikes on the Fourth. Um, for your 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 standard, you know, Mrs. Jones's house every other week, though. Do you have uh, some of that rescheduled, or is just Friday another normal work day? Friday's another 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 normal work day, and um, we're yeah we're working to try and make Fridays lighter anyway, um, and kind of kind of consolidate a lot, a little bit more of the work into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so we can kind of use Friday as a rollover day. Um, you know, that's sort of our, our thoughts is that, and then we can build book some more first time cleaning. So our Fridays aren't as busy as they used to be. Like we, everyone used to request that and we've kind of pushed people towards kind of peaking out on Wednesdays and then kind of um, keeping Friday a little bit open so we can force it. So for a holiday, we might not book as many one times and things like that. So I see Sarah Mitchell's here and she loves the <laughs> spot Fridays. I think Sarah is like on the beach this week, kind of chilling. What are you what are you doing on the spot right now? Are you like watching us uh, on your phone while you're uh, out on the beach? She is. She absolutely is. But you know, Sarah, she can do anything from the beach. That's her, that's her place. No. <laughs> She's she's got to be there. Hey, Leslie. Place is who I use, Leslie. Um, so Leslie was asking for leave behinds and stuff like that. So I I just had some um, door clings created um, for all of our. Uh, uh, I had some door clings created for all of our commercial spaces, and uh, it is. Uh, like a really nice kind of leave behind. We just put on all the doors of like the gyms and the uh, apartments. It's just you know, clean for safety and health and nice little icons on it. Um, that, that's one place. And they do, there's, they're certainly cheaper, but they always have promo codes and things like that you can find. Eric, I didn't hear you say the place, Matt. 
print place. So just two word oh, okay. print place. .com. You can always find promo codes for them and like, you know, faster turnarounds and, you know, upgrades on and things like that. And you guys, we're, we're going to talk PPP today, but it, it, we don't have a ton to talk about. So you're welcome to ask any old questions yeah. today. Anything you guys want to talk about is fine. Where do you order stuff, Tom? I'm trying to remember. I mean, we use these guys for forever. It's an it's an online. I think we do cheapprinting.com. I've used them before too. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up. It's one of the lower. I'm not really all that picky, so I kind of just whoever I can find is cheap. Just kind of my 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 deal. Yeah. Um. Leslie is asking for the name again. Print place, Leslie. I, I dropped it. Oh, he dropped it. Sorry, Tom. Thank you. We we've been using typically use Vista Print just because we've already got a bunch of stuff set up with them. Yeah. I don't but know. Is, That's the advantage of just sticking with one place is you know instead of going to like wherever ever is the cheapest is that once you have all your files set up and things that you're recurring like like have print like we would have our leave behinds and we would just you know, have those, you know, just resume printing. So, but you can, you can always shop it every single time and probably find a better price. Um, Cause somebody's looking for, you know, first time client special or something like that. So yeah, cheap printing, Vista print, print place. Those are all kind of common. And uh, they all probably, if you search for promo codes, you can find them all. And if anybody uses someplace, different, better, some place that they're like, oh, you got to use this place. Let us know. Drop a, drop us a little message there. So, yeah, and we, uh, we're we in the middle of kind of rebranding a little bit. So I guess I'm wearing the new logo. It's kind of hard to see in a shirt. Um, but the, the logo is a little bit cleaner, a little bit sleeker. You'll see it on the new website. Um, and then we just did a photo shoot. So we'll have a lot of new things to have printed. So um, making some new brochures for commercial and um, yeah, it's a little bit less leave behinds. We're still not doing paper leave behinds for our customers. Although I don't feel like the risk is really there for that stuff, right? Like right now. Um, I'm more comfortable with that. Um, so we may go back to paper checklists here pretty soon. Well, do we want to talk about uh, PPP, y'all? Yeah. Leslie's in the Redwoods. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Redwoods. I've only been there twice, but I loved it. Beautiful. It was kind of a quiet week for PPP this week. Um, I, I picked up a couple things that, uh, that are new. So Tom was... Uh, you know, Tom was asking, so, so Ann Wagner out of the house, uh, Republican, um, is kind of leading the charge on, I think a fairly good piece of legislation. Um, it's gonna, um, create a simplified online application for the, uh, forgiveness portion of the loan, which, um, which her thought process is, is sounds good is to take this 11 page application, which is the full application. There's two, there's, Tom reminded me, there's two applications. There's an easy application if you didn't have any reduction in um, employees or wages. Uh, that one's really straightforward. And I think it's like three pages or something like that. And then the current one is like 11 pages and looks like a little bit of work. Um, I'll take it for what they gave us. It's, you know, we'll do the work, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it. Uh, but but Ann Wagner, and, and uh, I guess it's bipartisan, there's some Democrats on this committee too that are pushing this through. Um, it looks like it looks like a good piece of legislation, and I think that they should be able to get uh, that pushed through in the Senate too. I think that that's going to happen. Um, other than that, I think we just, it's the, most of us are finishing our eight weeks um, and just, you know, having to decide whether it's time to apply for forgiveness now. If somehow you spent all of your funds, you figured out a way to do that, um, you know, then you would have some money left over. If you somehow, you know, hired a bunch of people to kind of scale up because there were some opportunities, you might have already done, you might have done that. Um, uh, but for me, I had a lot left over, so it didn't make sense. So I'm going to have to take the full 24 weeks. 
Um, I think unless you have either very high overhead or you bought out another business and had some, you know, excess labor for whatever reason, I can't imagine that there's a whole lot to debate whether 24 weeks is better or not for most of us. Well, for for those of us that got in early, Matt, before there was any idea that there might be a 24-week thing, our goal was spend it all, right? So we hired people to to spend it on, you know? I hired my web developer full-time, you know, I was giving, I was competing with unemployment with my employees. So I was giving people huge bonuses, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. um, a, a lot of people were in the same boat as me, especially people that, that got their PPP money before I did. But I do know that. Uh, that but I do, I do understand. So we did something a little different where we did work share. So all of our employees actually were still getting that $600 up until a couple of weeks ago. Um, they were getting paid by us for 32 hours and then they were still getting uh, $50 of unemployment from the state, give or take, and then $600 of federal unemployment. So they're getting about $650 a week on top of their salary. So um, we, so that allowed us to spend less per employee. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think we ended up with um, about 20 to 25% left over at the end. Which give which gave us about three to four more weeks of, of payroll to work with. So I get it. I, I, everyone had different strategies, um, you know, and how that works, and, and did different things. So um, you know, if, the eight, if, if you could make the number in eight weeks, because you know you're hiring extra people, are paying them big bonuses, things like that. Um, there are some advantages of, of, of closing out and, and asking for forgiveness with, within, within the eight-week period, I would think. Um, if you want to make adjustments to your staffing after you ask for forgiveness, I guess you've got more latitude to do that, right? Yeah, there's that. The other, the other thing, though, just and, I, and I, I try and highlight to this to everyone because I think it's, you know, I don't think it's a very clear point, but, you know, I don't know how to best describe it, but just remember – you have to have spent more than your PPP fund to get full forgiveness because some of that money, how you would have spent it every single week would not be forgivable. So let's say, for example, you had $10,000 a week in payroll, just a nice round number. Well, only 8,000 of that was probably forgivable of that 10,000 you spent because 15% of that was FICA and 5% of that was probably employee federal taxes that you took from that pot. Um, you know, it was your employee's money, but it, it all came from that $10,000. Um, so that's not forgivable. So there's probably give or take, if you had, you know, a 10, you know, you know, a hundred thousand dollar number, let's say 20,000 of it or, or 16,000 of it in, in this scenario for eight weeks would be left over that you would still be on the hook for. So you would have needed to spend 116 to $120,000 um, in that period to get full forgiveness unless well, yeah, you, you would have to. You'd have to spend $120,000. There's no way. There's so so uh, for most people, not for most people, I guess. So there are a lot of different ways that people manage that money. Some people put their PPP money into a separate account, and then they just started spending out of that account. Yeah. So for those people, you would have had to add more money. For people that... Um, didn't do that, that they put their money in there and they kept depositing more money in to that account, maybe into your operations account, and you were tracking it on your spreadsheet, you, your spreadsheet may have, a, you know, figured that all out for you. But Matt's whole point is you got to check it out. Yeah. I do know, I wanted to point out though, that um, Megan Likes has sort of made a bit, really big point that she doesn't think anybody should ask for forgiveness early. Nobody. Uh, even if you spent it all, she doesn't think that that's the smart move. Her thinking is that there are two changes that could potentially happen. One is that and I probably should let her speak to this because I'm getting this from somebody else. Um, but one of her points from, from what she posted on her page um, one of her points is that the government has been consistently changing what they're doing. And when they change, things tend to get better for us. 
And so why would you want to ask for forgiveness now when there might be even better terms coming? Um, the, the chance for that is happening. The second thing is, is that there's been some conversation out there that they are going to create a system for smaller companies of which we all fall into that category, maybe not all of us, but most of us fall into the category, that um, if you're a smaller company, that there isn't going to be any, any paperwork to figure out. It's automatically going to end up being forgiven with like one quick click. Yeah, I've heard several hundred thousand dollars. If you took a PPP loan for under a hundred thousand dollars, they're not going to ask for any documentation. So that that is subject to you know getting approved by the SBA, but I don't even think that would even need to be legislated. I think that the SBA could actually just say, yeah. we're just going to make this decision because it's just going to be overwhelming on the banks to to deal with this. Um, so the first round of the first round of PPP, the average loan was around two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The second round of PPP, uh, the average loan was around forty thousand dollars. So. Um, you know, the big companies came in on the first round and kind of figured it all out and, um, you know, not relatively bigger, right? But um, so, yeah, you, I, I would agree the longer we wait, there's probably some advent, advantageous. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of a, a, a wild card that's coming that I think is worth exploring is, but I'm, I'm filling out the tax credits for um, the – I'm not even sure what this program is called. Me and Tom were talking about what's the benefit in the early days of this, which one's better to do PPP or these tax credits. I'm filling them out now just in case the government approves you to take PPP and um, these uh, retention tax credits. Um, Cause I'm looking at if they, there, there's some talks in, you know, uh, in the works about approving both. And that would be about $170,000 in taxes back in my pocket now. Um, I don't pay $170,000 in taxes a year. So I would be able to extend that up to like, I believe five years is what they're talking about. Um, you know, that's, that's, that, uh, that, that's going on right now. And then, um, you know, I'm still working the Watsi tax credits. If you aren't familiar, uh, work opportunity tax credits. Um, I generally get about $22,000 a year back in taxes through those. And, um, I think a lot of our employees are actually going to qualify for lots of tax credits here because they were technically unemployed this year. So if you rehired them, I, I would imagine you might get a work opportunity tax credit for rehiring your own employees. And that could be $8,000 per employee. You can have your best lots of year ever. I don't know that for sure. Um, but uh, I was talking to my, I was talking to my from, uh, from Synergy Park who processes these for me. And uh, she seems to believe that we will probably get a Watsi credit on every employee we laid off. So wow. that's something to, you know, there's a lot of other, there's a lot of other government programs that you can kind of play and learn how to use um, that, that potentially have some financial impact uh, for you. So I would look up, I would look up uh, WOTC credits. Uh, someone mentioned they use ADP. Um, there's ADP probably has a direct integration with somebody. Um, there's several we'll probably do another call just specifically on tax credits because it's a, it's a deep discussion and yeah. you can save yourself a ton of money, but, uh, you know, there's some finer points to it where you, I mean, you're, you're paying people to find these tax credits for you. So they got this thing called the alternative minimum tax. Sometimes you think that you're going to be able to save a bunch in taxes, but sometimes you really aren't. So yeah, that, that is, that is a tricky thing. If you're, if you start making over, if you start making over $200,000 per business owner, like per year, then you start getting into the, AM, the AMT. So that, that is true. Like you can end up, end up paying someone to, to file these tax credits for you at 15% per tax credit. Um, yep. and you end up paying for it and not, and not able to use it. So that is true. I have that. I, uh, I dropped a link in the chat. It's a Forbes article, and it basically gives the pros and cons of applying for forgiveness at eight weeks or 24 weeks. And um, if you think that you're going to have to borrow, or you're going to need to borrow, or you're going to want to borrow more money sooner rather than later, 
it's advantageous to do it in eight weeks because it kind of gets that off your 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 your, your credit. Um, but they do mention in this article that the legislation is not done on this yet, and if you wait for the 24 weeks, there could be other changes coming that would be more favorable to you that you would miss if you did it in eight weeks. So it's, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot, lot to it. You know, if you're thinking that you're, you want to make changes to your staffing that, you know, you might, your staffing might be where it needs to be for the eight week period, but do you want to carry that for the full 24 weeks? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to consider on both on both sides of it. Yeah, obviously the, the risk is, you know, that uh, the economy slows down again and you've got to, you've got to um, figure out, you know, how to you know, interplay with that. But I think if the economy gets hit again from this, if there's another downturn. There's another round of money. There's another round of money. They're, they're all so deep. I mean, they're up to their elbows in this. There's no, there's no turning back. They cannot stop like trying to save the economy at this point. Like there is, there is, it would, it would all be for nothing if they just said, you know what, we're, we're going to just call it good at this point. So if this, you know, and there's so many industries that are still so hard hit that they're going to have to bail out like hospitality, you know, that, that, inter, that, that entertainment restaurant industry that employs like 20% of Americans. I mean, maybe not that high, but it's, it's, a, we can Google like what percentage of Americans work in work in hospitality um, and hotels, restaurants, things like that are going to be a while till they come back. Um, and so there's going to need to be some specific things to help them get back on their to get back on their feet and uh, to, you know, to come. Oh, and they're shutting stuff down again. Right. I just saw. Where is it? Florida and Texas, um, Arizona. Arizona. Sarah's on here. She's out in Phoenix. They're like getting torn apart with us again. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm not going to be a skeptic here, but so let's, I, I do think that some of this does get overhyped and we, the news media does. I, I definitely am definitely firm believer of COVID is a very real threat. We need to take it very seriously, but some of this, I read an article where the CEOs of, of all these hospitals in Houston were saying, we run at 90% ICU capacity this time of year, almost every year. So if we hit 100%, that's just our normal capacity. We have surge capacity that we have above and beyond this. So when all these news articles are saying, oh, they're at 100% capacity, well, last year they were at 95% capacity this time of year is what is what these CEOs were saying. So I do think we have to take it with a grain of salt and just really look at what the data is really saying is one of the things that I look at is, is that, is that the deaths per day are still declining in the country as a whole, but there are places where they are trending up. And so it, but it's not, it's not exceeding the capacity of these hospitals, but we are going to probably have to make a clawback to make sure that we don't, the, the idea is again, we were always trying to flatten the curve. We, we may be, didn't work hard enough on that in some places and we're going to have to claw some of those things back. But I'm, I'm hopeful that we can look at the data and say it's not as bad and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is just going to get out of hand again. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that's not the case. Um, another thing that kind of struck, struck out, stuck out to me is in, in Italy, the average death was 81 in America. It's definitely seems to be lower and nobody is really talking about that, but I think that has a lot to do with, you know, poor health outcomes and some other issues that we have here already. Um, so I, I don't know if we, if we could look at ho hopefully as a society protecting our, our more vulnerable populations and not having to lock down the whole society again, those are, those are kind of above our pay grade, I guess, but you know, that's but it stands to figure that there's a, a, a legitimate chance yeah. you know, that the economy is, is going to be struggling for for a number of months because of COVID and the overall numbers are rising. So it would, you know, it doesn't look like it's getting better. It looks like it's getting worse in most parts of the country. Yeah. I think, I think if you go on the, the number of cases and hospitalizations, it certainly is. It's not, it's, it's not. And the, and the projections were that it was supposed to get better in the summer. So going into the fall, we had a little bit of, you know, 
padding, if you will, thinking that it would get worse in the fall. Now, you know, well, just like it's going to. Yeah, yeah. It, things need to change, you know. There's still a lot of debate about, you know, do we need to wear masks? And one you know, thing is that if, if it is bad, this bad already, right? We're talking about, they're saying 10% of people have already probably been exposed and, and have had COVID, right? Um, I mean, if we've just, just decided to rip the Band-Aid off, if it's that bad already, then maybe we'll get to some point where sooner than later, you know, it, I think our strategy has certainly failed in containment. Like that's certainly, we didn't contain. So, you know, maybe there's some other, some other light in the tunnel, but uh, I don't know. I, I think it should, it should be, you're, you're right. Reasonable, reasonable to think that we are going to experience some, some prolonged economic downturn. Um, I think our industry is still well positioned to kind of get through on the other side of this. What we got, what we don't have is is uh, the clear answer of how this is transmitted yet, but it does look like we're not as worried about you know going in and disinfecting every surface and like you know hosing everything down with bleach and and that's less of a, a less of a selling point that we can go in and, and you know the, the the electrostatic sprayers and all that stuff uh, um, don't appear to be as necessary, right? So. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know if I actually agree with that. I just think that psychologically people are tired and they're worn down, and so that's that's where we're getting a lot of of this apathy from. Uh, I personally currently know a lot more people that are dealing with um, COVID nineteen. Um, than, than I did even even one month ago. Right now, I don't think I I know very many companies that haven't uh, companies of any kind of size that haven't had at least one person that is um, diagnosed with COVID um, and, and like the past just few weeks. Here. Yeah, and, and, and that's anecdotal, but that's it real. In, in that context, it's worse now than it was a month ago. I didn't have anybody that works for me that had COVID a, work, a month ago. I do now. I didn't have clients that, that we knew about that had COVID a month ago, but I do now. So that's yeah. worse, right? We've, we've always had some clients. We do a lot of like mid-rise apartments in St. Louis City, and a lot of those are loaded up with doctors and, um, you know, people in the medical space. And so we, we've had... We've had a few uh, clients that have that have had it. We've had one employee test positive, um, and uh, the outcome on that was good. She's young, healthy, um, you know, recover. You know, uh, she's already in her second week, so uh, she's she was diagnosed like ten days ago. So she's ready to come back to work in a few days. Uh, she's we've been communicating with her. She's feeling great. She's ready to come back, but we're not ready to have her back until the fourteen days from her positive test, basically. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I think uh, you're right. I think I, I don't have a clear answer on that. I think you know, just to you know, psychologically, I feel like I'm less worried about it than I was. Uh, you know, everybody because, is. Yeah, we're tired of worry. I'm, I'm done with that. Yeah. 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 People are just exhausted from it, and now with everything else with that's <laughs> going on, you know, it's people. I, they just can't sustain that this high level of upset and frustration and disappointment and irritation and all of the, uh, you know, everything that's going on. So, you know, people are angry, people are lashing out and it's hard to be angry about COVID because there isn't somebody to blame. Yeah. You know? uh, so, so my low point was probably in the first weeks of this in March. And um, I, I joke, this is a, this is a funny story. I don't know if I even share this with you guys, but um so early March, before this really even really got bad, you know, me and Tom were, you know, talking about this and he started this call. But um, I had been stocking up. I had bought like tens of thousands of dollars worth of like supplies. And like I'd bu been buying through February and like kind of panic buying. Like I just like was getting really nervous about this. Well, March, I started like like looking for jobs. I was like, I don't know like, what's going to get me through this. So I was like, a as a manager, like anything, because I was like, this shit's gonna shut down everything except except Amazon. So I went through the whole like 
process, but I was like, I'm not, I don't know if I'm really going to take a job at, at Amazon, but I did learn they have an awesome application process. So even if you're not panicking and like whatever, you should do their application because it's, it's eye opening as far as how our application should be. Um, but I was, I was panicked in early March. I was like, I'm going to probably need a new career. I don't know that our businesses are going to survive this. Um, you know, like, uh, and that was before, that was two weeks before we shut down on, um, I believe we shut down on March 23rd. So, um, you know, that, I feel like that was my low point in all of this is where I'm panicking to like find another career. Like it's going to be, it's like, it's going to be over. Cause you know, there was no government plan in place. There was no money. There was no, um, I'm selling stocks. I'm like, uh, I'm refinancing my house and doing a home equity loan. I'm doing all this stuff in March before all this hit. Cause I'm like, it's going to be bad. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be awful. I don't think my wife had ever seen me that nervous before. Cause I was like, we just have to have like a war chest. Like we're just there like to get through this, we're going to need, we're going to need a lot. Like it's going to be, it's going to be bad. So yeah, now I'm like, oh, well, whatever. If they shut it down again, like, well, they'll just give us more money. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that was before, you know, PPP and idle and who, because yeah. we were having these discussions and talking about, you know, get as much money as you can and kind of stick it aside. You're going to need it. Had no idea that the government was going to step in like this. And, and in this way, this is, well, what is it again? <laughs> Unprecedented. Yeah. It, it really is. It's crazy. Uh, so Bridget has a question. She wants to know, are you guys requiring another test proving a negative before coming back to work when an employee tests? positive. Matt, I think you said you were, or are you just timing it out 14 Eight days? Days with no symptoms. So like, you know, 14 days from the positive test and, you know, you know, no symptoms. So um, that's what, that's what I'm going off of. But you, you know, you're right. There are people that do have prolonged, um, mm -hmm. prolonged cases. Um, I don't think that she, this particular person is going to be, she's young, healthy, and has probably a good immune system. Hopefully she's back next week, but that's not a terrible idea. Um, I, I'll have to ask and see what uh, what uh, my insurance agent thinks about that and how we would go about that. That's not a bad idea, Bridget. I think that that could be something we could talk about. Would it make sense to ha ask her to ask her to see a physician and bring back something saying that she's fit for work? That's a good idea. Yeah, she's she's. You, you, you got We just talked about this in our um, MMA group today, and one of the things that we're going over is. Can you require something like that because HIPAA? You know, you I, I'm not sure that you can require them to tell you that you can that there you can get them to say that they're okay to return to work, but I'm not sure that you're going to be able to require that they get like a negative test or well HIPAA, that, that uh, show you that they do. HIPAA is protecting their identity. You know, I mean, you're not telling the entire workforce that, you know, this individual, you know, has an illness, that's a HIPAA issue, but one-on-one -on -one behind closed doors, you're not really disclosing anything. Um, but, but like some issues, there still might be some issues. I don't know. Um, we also were talking about um, what, what we're all going to be doing. I don't think I'm sharing anything out of school. Yeah, I think um, pretty much what we're going to be doing is if you get the fast test, that's like, you know, the one that they get you the results in 15 minutes, that's pricey, uh, depending on where you live. It can be, you know, 100 bucks to 300 bucks are the prices I've heard. Mm -hmm. But if you get the other one, the free test, you can get that, well, for free or maybe like 10 bucks on your insurance, but it's going to take you, five days. you know, uh, mm -hmm. up to five days and as few as maybe three. Um, so we're talking about just sending all our people in to get the test and at least getting a, a clear test from everybody moving forward and having that instead of just, you know, swiping a, now that we can, it's a possibility now, you know, that's an option now where before it was, you know, temperature readings, but I think a nice clear test would be much better. I also, I also feel like if we are following our PPE uh, protocols and, you know, when they come back, they're wearing masks, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're not in close contact with other people. Um, the likelihood of spread is incredibly low. So we moved. Um, I know somebody that just 
their company has been doing all of the right stuff, everything in success group just this morning, Matt, and got a call that one of his people popped positive today. Incredibly low, probably a bit optimistic, but, you know, certainly, you know, taking the Cautions helps a bunch. Well, we work as singles now, so we've moved all we moved all teams. So we wouldn't be exposing each other in cars and things like that. I mean, we have some teams, but um, this would be a single. And then you know, again, we aren't we're not allowing our employees to have any direct contact with any customers. And the only the only place that that even comes up is our commercial spaces where um, people are are working, and that's the only place where sometimes they have. You know, okay, can you step out of your office so we can clean it or something like that? Where they where they're in a space where someone recently was, um, yeah. So it's uh, it's certainly tricky. You're right. It's uh, it's not a clear cut answer as to how this is even spread yet. So, you know, if if someone was in a room five minutes before you, can you walk in there and and be exposed? You know, possibly. Well, we've we've have some some articles that reference a lot of studies that. They're getting better at this, that, you know, you have to be exposed for a certain amount of time and have a certain amount of, of dosage, if you will, viral load in order to, to get sick. And, um, you know, there's there, you, the whole six feet, you know, thing being six feet apart matters. Uh, being exposed for longer than 15 minutes matters. If you're in the presence of someone... Yeah. If it's just for like five or ten minutes, the likelihood of getting a viral load is less, much less. So, walking up and down the aisles of a of a grocery store, for instance, is relatively a low risk thing. Um, it's lower risk if everybody's wearing a face mask, and you certainly it's lower risk if you're staying six feet apart. But short durations are are, are safer. But if you're in a confined space for a longer period of time, that's where where the real risk comes in. And we talk, about, we talk about doing all this at work, but a bigger risk probably is what is everybody doing when they're off work and where are they going after work? And are we following all the right precautions and being as safe as we can be between that time when we, we, we're, we leave work and we go back to work the next day, what happened in between? And, um, some of the situations I'm hearing is that that's where people, you know, not everybody is behaving as safely as off of work as what we're encouraging and in, in, in leading them to do while they're on work. Yeah, I've certainly. We're hearing about the three B's, bars, beaches, and beauty. So those are, those are the, the bad spots, bars, beaches, and beauty. Uh -huh. So and, and almost all of our young people are doing some version of one of those three B's. So, Sam has a question for you here, Matt. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, I'm re getting it. Probably. Residential clients at home right now, since many people are still working from home, many have kids. Most of our most of our families will step out and go to like the park or step outside. Um, a lot of them have gone into their. We have basements here in St. Louis versus like what you have in uh, Phoenix. So a lot of families will go down to their basements and play like hang out in their rec room while we're there. Uh, if people are working from home, again, most of them you know, go to another room. A lot of our apartment dwellers, a lot of those apartments have common areas that they'll go to and work from while, they're, while, they're, while their homes are being cleaned. Um, but I, I think we're just asking our, our customers to stay in a separate area from where we're cleaning. And then we'll, you know, they'll transition if we need to, to clean that space. But then we are kind of cleaning up while they're in close, close proximity. But I'd say a, a good majority of our customers are stepping outside, doing some outside activity. Um, we, it can't, I don't know if you can hear it here, but there's like really bad storms here today. That's probably not possible with, uh, we're having like a really nasty weather, uh, line coming through St. Louis all day. But I, th I think the homes are configured a little different here than, than Phoenix where, um, the basements are like kind of a really big space here. That's a really commonly used space and we don't necessarily always clean those. Um, and we're not doing, doing a lot of, of those right now. So we're trying to have limited contact with our customers. So that's, that's helping. Matt, are really loud thing. when we started off, Matt, you were, we were talking about some legislation that that's being considered with the PPP. What was the nature of that legislation? How has that 
change going to yeah. potentially benefit us? I think just the idea is just to simplify the application so that we don't have to have a lawyer and an, and an attorney, you know, I'm sorry, the same thing, uh, an account, um, you know, doing all this paperwork for us. And, you know, I mean, some of us that know our numbers really well, like this application process wasn't that big a deal for us or Tom, who's lucky enough to have basically an accountant on staff for all his companies. Like we're not all so lucky to have that. So some of this, some of this, you know, pulling these numbers and reports and things like that, um, you know, not all business owners are as number savvy as, as some of us. So um, the idea behind it was, is that it's just going to be a online application. You plug in everything there versus a PDF. And then that's where the, like the, fair, the it'll, it'll work with your bank um, to do forgiveness. It'll spit that out to your bank or whatever. And you don't have to do a PDF. It'll do all the calculations for you and be very, very user friendly is the goal. Um, there is a, there is something like that already created that was at the eight week point. I don't know if they updated it. Mark Cuban and uh, do you remember that application that he created that was uh, um, a PPP forgiveness calculator that was, and it would fill out your application for you? It's kind of based on that idea. Um, Mark Cuban in conjunction with, uh, maybe Google that really quick, uh, Mark Cuban PPP forgiveness calculator. Um, maybe put drop that in the links. But it was a, uh, it, it was just. We have, we have one already saved in the links too. Not not the Mark Cuban one, but we have another one that is a calculator that fills in the application at, at the same time. It's the same information. It's lined up the same way. Yeah, it but it wasn't written by Mark Cuban. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, and Jill Castillo. Is that Jill Mar Mar Castillo? Castillo, yeah. Um, yeah. But what about Jill? Oh, she just tagging us. Yeah. So, so they they teamed up to to help create this uh, this app this application. Okay. So the idea is that it's that it's going to be just quick and easy. Now the government's doing it. So it will really turn out right. So it's uh, it's the idea there though um, that the average small business owner filled out. <laughs> $40,000 loan is just not like as tech savvy and things like that, that they're just, they're just going to make the process really easy for everybody. So that's the only really big news that I, that I've heard again, that was out of a committee run by Ann Wagner or she's not, I guess she's not even the head of the committee, but she's the one talking it up because um, that's, you know, she's promoting it because I think it's, it's good policy and she's up for reelection. So um, I, you know, I, I heard her promoting this in the last couple of days and uh, it actually, I do think that it'll get passed. It's going to get, uh, it's going to get moved forward at some point. Um, that, that's the only other big. My thinking is their goal. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. Oh, uh, that's the only. That's the only big piece of legislation change. I feel like things are kind of more stable right now, at least for the, the short period of time. Uh, my thinking here is they're going to have to do something because, like you said, not very many people are as number savvy as Thomas, especially with a lot of smaller businesses, right? The smaller our businesses are, the, the less number savvy we can tend to be. I'm doing a lot of the work ourselves, right? We've got QuickBooks, Quicken, whatever, and we're just doing all of, doing everything ourselves. Yeah. They can't, they can't afford to deal with that. They can't afford the amount of time, resources that are going to have to be spent sorting out the amount of mistakes that yeah. small businesses are going to make. They, they don't have those, those resources. They're going to have to figure out some way to make it easy enough that they can, they can get through, <laughs> that they can get their job done. The banks are going to want that too. They're not going to want to have to put up with um, just the dog pile of these applications. And it's just, if it's, you know, if it's just, you know, a headache to try and sort through, um, you know, I, I think that that's probably part of it. It's just going to be wrong. There's going to be so many mistakes. Yeah. You're going to have to fix so much. Yeah, a lot of these monies, whether you're doing it in eight weeks or 24 weeks, the monies are going to be gone before the viruses. So there's more stuff coming. So they're going to, they can't make a career out of adjudicating this one program because they've got they've got other stuff in the queue that they're they're going to have to be dealing with at the same time. 
Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think that there's probably there's probably another round of something coming. Maybe it's more targeted than this. This was just like a this was just sort of like a blanket. Maybe they're gonna you know get out the laser beam and target the industries that need it the most. But yeah, there's more there's more on the way. Uh, Jay Powell and Steve Mnuchin, the Fed chair and the, uh, I guess, person responsible for the Treasury, they both were speaking to Congress today and painting a picture that there's still work to be done and we're going to have to do more to help the economy go along. And um, yeah. they're not done writing checks yet and printing money. The Main Street Lending Program, This most of us probably don't need access to this money. Um, but if you do, like, let's say, you know, you have, for whatever reason, still have a need for capital, that program went live maybe a week or two ago, Main Street Lending, you can look at that. You would go through your bank and find out if they're a Main Street Lending program, but that money's going to be borrowed um, through the bank, but, but guaranteed by the Fed, and um, loans of significant value of, I think, upwards of $10 million or more, uh, at very low and in appealing interest rates. Uh, for small to medium-sized businesses, that pro that program went live. Um, Are they for businesses that employ more than 500 people, though? It can be, but it but so but a medium-sized business is 500 more. I think anything under 500 is considered in, in the Small Business Administration is considered a small business. Um, I have a friend that is looking at that Main Street Lending program because the the idle money, the EIDL, like fell well short. So. <laughs> Was going to get two million dollars in EIDL money because his business, you know, would have qualified for that, but they got one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is about a month worth of, of money that they needed to kind of get things squared away. So, um, you know, thank God we don't have their problems. Like some, like I have some friends and some networking that I do. I mean, I'm I'm happy and I feel blessed that we don't have the same problems that some of these other businesses do. I, I mentioned him before. Uh, he's in the uh, the promotion space and does sound and lighting for concerts. And I'm not going to a concert for a while. Um, I'm not going to any live, big live events for a while. I don't think many of us are going to feel comfortable with that um, for the foreseeable future. Now, there's some people that, that do. There's some people that are ready to probably go do that stuff now. I don't, I'm not one of them. But um, I think there's going to be, um, there's going to be a lot of people that are, that are earning levels there. So if you know me, I'm also involved in like triathlons and do like, you know, do some like large sporting events. And so in the world of people that I hang out with that, they're so disappointed that, that all these events are being canceled. There's like, they want to go do their events and like they're, they're these things that they've been training for for the last year. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of pent up energy. People just want to go do this stuff. And I'm like, I'm just like, man, like really you want to go do, Cause like when you get out of the swim, you like have somebody help peel you out of this wetsuit and then people slather sunscreen on you. Cause you're going to go out and like be on a bike ride for like five hours. And then you're going to go run for like four or five hours. So then somebody puts sunscreen on you. Got like, like people touch you. Like nobody's going to want to sign up for that job. So they're, they're, they're talking about like these, if they ever have these things again, they're going to look way different. Like you're not going to have somebody doing that. Right. And, and like, you're not going to have aid stations where someone hands you a water at a, at a, at a marathon, right? Like that's, you're going to be running with a hydro pack on your back with like seven liters of water and like carrying your own water with you. So all this stuff is going to look different if we're going to have it again. We're going to have to re, we're going to have to get creative and rethink how we do some of this stuff. So I think it's going to happen. We're going to get these industries back. Um, but we're going to have to be creative, I think, and, and really rethink it. Um, I think we all have to be creative and really rethink hey, how Yep. It's, it's getting late. We've only got three minutes. And I just wanted to check in with everybody about Friday real quick. Okay. Would you guys go ahead and do your thing? Well, this is cleaning business today. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It's just your email, your first name and your last name. Really, really easy. And we'll share you the link with all of the resources that we've accumulated. There's a really good calculator here for PPP loan forgiveness. There's a lot of stuff here, a lot of awesome information, actually, FAQ scripts, uh, all the resources we pulled together for, you know, the, the, the racism discussion. Um, we should probably take a, one of these Facebook lives and just go through and revisit.
everything that we have on our resource page because there's we a really lot. should do that tom that's a great idea i i really in starting at the bottom and working our way up that's actually a really good idea um uh, off early on Friday, Marlo. Okay, so that's what we're asking. So what we, I would like from you guys, anybody that is on the call right now, if you are planning on being on the Facebook Live on Friday, could you please type yes? And if you're not, just type no for me. We're, this guest that we have coming is such a big guest that I think people are going to really be upset <laughs> If we have her on and um, we didn't like warn people better or something. So if you could just tell us yes, no, thumbs up, thumbs down, something would be helpful. Uh, still planning on having her, uh, but I, well, we're getting a lot of yeses, Tom. Yeah. I'm in. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. One no. Carol's a no. Do you know I can get a 300 DPI photo for advertising purposes? Park Eastern, Sam. To, I don't know what time it is in Phoenix. They don't do daylight savings time. That confuses me. It's the same time, Sam. Same time as always. Yeah, 5 o'clock. All right, so Bridget, Bridget's no. We had um, two, pe two people that were no. Oh, Bridget might pop in. Um, so we had two no's, but for the most part, it was absolutely yes. I, I don't know what Linda wants to know. Do you guys understand that question? Do you know where I can get a 300 DPI photo for advertising purposes? I don't know a photo of what. We need more info. Like a photo, there, Linda. photo printer? I don't or just actual photo. I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. Probably yeah, more. I'm guessing she's doing something that they're requesting a 300 DPI photo. So I, I guess it depends on how, how you would render it down to that. Yeah. Like if it came. Well, that's good to know that that is small. <laughs> oh, well, it's a logo. 300 DPI is not really that small. Like that's actually pretty dense uh, for printing. So most of the time, printers want vector logos, which don't really re rely on on DPI. Like, so um, I would look at how your logo was created and see if you have either an EPS file or a uh, Illustrator file, which would be what would be the extension for that? Uh, you no, know, mm -hmm. you can find it online. It would be whoever created it for you would be in your folder of your of your files, Linda. Um, Illustrator would be a vector file, wouldn't it? I'm just trying to think of what the extension would be for an Illustrator file. Would it be you? You need to look in your folder of like how it was created, and if you have, if you don't have that, you could you could have somebody create a vector file for you, which an AI would, file. What AI file? Yeah, it's still an Illustrator file. Dot AI. I, I'm gonna guess if you don't know what those are, you probably don't have them. But the person that created created your logo for you would have that. Um, somewhere they had to have used Illustrator, I would assume, to make your logo, um, or something else along those lines. Something, something that, that creates things in vector format. Oh, you're creating a new one. So, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, it would just need to, it would need to be a an Illustrator file or, or or an EPS file. So when you have it created, make sure that they get that, and you can create a high resolution format of it, but like, um, you know, PNG, which is a, this is a nerdy topic. Um, PNG, yeah. which is uh, a, a, a file with high resolution that has a clear background. <laughs> okay, but we are out of time. Liz, do you want to give a hint as to, since we're full steam ahead with uh, On the Spot on Friday, who's our guest? Give us a hint. So this business owner ha is, either owns currently or has started more than five businesses in the time that I've known her. Okay. So there's a couple of hints all buried in that, uh, that thought. Yep. So tomorrow, five o'clock, if you guys, you guys need to join us to hear, hear you. So it'll, it'll make your head spin and just in terms of broadening your, your, your thinking in terms of what's possible. And, um, He'll have good stuff for you, I promise. Uh -huh. So you guys uh, have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 5. Bye-bye.
yeah, well, so I'll have a good couple of questions for you to ask him. There's a couple of things that I really like the way he does things. So there'll be some good, some good topics I'll give you. We probably yeah. should put him on for on the spot and just make him do rapid fire without you and me on there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, Bye. Thanks for helping. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.